Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are diving into a topic that's essential for modern application design, which is an API gateways. Whether you are building microservices, designing scalable systems, or preparing for an interview, understanding uh, API, API gateways is a must. So let's, tr let's break it down, what they are, why we need them, and how they work. First, let's try to answer the question of what exactly is an API gateway? An API gateway is like the front door of your application's backend. It acts as a central server that handles all requests from clients such as web browsers or mobile apps and routes them to the appropriate backend services. Think of it, of it this way. Instead of clients directly communicating with multiple microservices, the API gateway simplifies things by becoming a single entry point. It manages requests, enforces security, and ensure everything runs smoothly. API gateways has multiple duties, and we can think about them. So let's just try to take an example. Let's assume that no, 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 not delete, delete. Um, let's assume that we have a client, and this client can be like a mobile desktop or whatever it will be. And it will be connected with an API gateway gateway and the API gateway will send the requests to our web servers or web services to our servers, let's say servers because we need to focus right now on the API gateway. Okay, what the API gateway is doing here? First, let's try to understand why uh, why do we need actually an API gateway? First, why we use it here? So without an API gateway, clients need to know the details of every backend service, like its location and its, its um, API specifications. Imagining like um, an e-commerce app where separate services handle user payments, uh, inventory, um, I don't know, my orders, it would be a chaos for clients, specifically for front-end developers to interact with each service directly. With an API gateway, the client or the, uh, the client can send the requests and the API gateway could redirect, let's just delete this, and the API gateway could redirect the request to the service that it's, it, it, um, it's 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 corresponding service that could handle this type of request. So with an API gateway, clients just need their request to one place, and the API gateway handles routing, security, and even performance optimization. So let's try to understand what um, um, what are the features the API gateway provides because they provide a lot of things. I would say there are eight things that you need to understand and you need to master. <coughs> the first thing, let's um, let's just make this quite long, and delete this one, and delete this one, and delete this one as well, and make it also. I could make it bigger than that. Let's just make it like that. Okay, let's copy this one. The first thing will be um, authentication and authorization. Okay. Okay, that's just okay. The first thing we have authentication and authorization. The API gateway ensures only authorized users can access backend services by verifying their identity using tokens like OAuth or G G uh, JSON Web Tokens. It also checks if users have permissions to access specific, uh, specific resources. The second thing that API gateways do is... No, 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 no. Is rate limiting. To prevent abuse, the API gateway get can limit how many requests a client can make in a given time frame. For instance, public API's might allow for 100% uh, 
a 100 requests per minute per user. If a client exceeds this, their um, requests are temporarily blocked. Second, we have what we call load balancer. It's um, it do like load balan balancing. So API Gateway can in like it 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 can distribute traffic across multiple instances of a service, ensuring no single instance gets overloaded. Also, it does a great job in caching. By temporarily storing frequently accessed data, the gateway reduces latency and improves user experience. For example, it can cache responses for popular endpoints like weather forecasts. Also, it do a lot of things in request transformation. So if a backend service expect a request in a specific format, the gateway can transform incoming requests to match their requirements. Similarly, it can modify responses for the client. Also, the API gateway do a lot of service discovery as well. Um, it dynamically sits in, 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 in dynamic systems where services scale up or down, the API gateway uses service discovery to find the right backend instances to route all the requests. And also, it has, I guess, two more things I guess we need to talk about. It will be, we can just make this uh, long, longer. Yeah, but just not that long. Uh, the thing that we could uh, talk about is the circuit breaking. So if a service is constantly failing, the API gateway stops routing requests to it temporarily, preventing cascading failures across um, the system. And lastly, um, it's also is doing a lot of um, logging, monitoring, and stuff like that. So this all the the things that you think API Gateway is, is doing, and it's doing a lot of things, um, maybe even more than that. So we need to walk through how API Gateway process a client request step by step. First, we have a request receptions, like when you place an order on a food delivery app, the app sends the request to the API Gateway. This request includes details like your user ID, selected items, and payment methods. After that, we have a request validation uh, process. The API Gateway ensures the request is com complete and correctly formatted. If anything is missing, it immediately rejects the request. The second, we have the authentication and authorization. Next, it verifies your identity and permission using your authentications token. If you're not authorized, it sends back an error. After that, we have a rate limiting. Um, the gateway checks how many requests you have made recently. If you have hit the limit, it temporarily blocks additional requests. After that, we have the request transformation. If the backend services require specific data formats, the gateway transforms the request. For example, it might convert your delivery address into uh, GPS coordinates. After that, we have request routing. Um, using a service discovery, because we use it right now, the, the gateway routes uh, your request to the appropriate backend services like the inventory service to check the availability or payment service to process your transaction. After that, we have response handling, like once the backend services responds, respond, the gateway transforms the data if necessary, cache uh, 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 it, it caches it for future requests and sends it back to the client. And the end, we have logging and monitoring, like throughout um, this process, the gateway Log, lo logs key metrics like request time and error rates helping administrators keep the system running smoothly. So imagine you're ordering pizza through an app, you choose your toppings, confirm your address and 
complete payments, the API gateway will simpler, uh, simplifies this process because it's receiving your order requests, authenticates you and checks your permission, routes the order to the services for inventory payment and delivery and combines uh, responses into one unique results. So this is what API gateways is. API gateways are um, an important topic of modern application architecture. It's the hero, the hero of heroes, especially for microservices. They simplify operation, enhance security, and make scaling a breeze. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell below so you never miss a video and see you guys in future problems. Or future videos, we hope we have no problems.